Hi folks, Jason here. In this video we're going to be exploring trim sheets. Now, this is something I've not really covered before in uh, my previous videos. I've played around with imagery and modeled from imagery and kind of used like sim single imagery as a sort of basis. Trim sheets are slightly different. And the definition of uh, trim sheets uh, are basically the textures that combine a number of sort of separate details into a single sheet. So this is um, uh, could range from things like wood, metal, things like that. As long as it's repeatable, as long as you can kind of um, uh, create a sort of a repetitive pattern, something that will sort of tile, uh, you can use that and create quite large environments. Now, one of the reasons that's used, uh, particularly in industry, for uh, mainly for environment art, but also you can sort of create assets, is that it's very good at saving space you know when it comes to things like graphics card and um, you know basically memory uh, in the um, in the game engine and if you can use kind of just very few image you know images to sort of create an environment then you know uh, that's you know definitely a positive thing so that's what we're going to be exploring uh, there's quite a lot to cover now in this video i'm going to be going through some of the basics and creating this like little kind of fantasy scene i'm not going to create the entire thing i might just uh, create a little wall and just kind of go through the process and just touch on some of the things i've created in this scene and uh, beyond that i'm going to be looking at creating a sci-fi scene maybe a kind of like horror type scene as well something like resident evil or something like that but um hopefully you're going to find it useful and uh well let's get going before we get going let's just look at some examples of trim sheets so you can see here on Pinterest, I've created a page full of different examples that you could use. They do tend to kind of follow a sort of similar theme, um, horizontal bands, essentially, of different um, patterns, textures, things like that. You can see here the sci-fi uh, texture, for example kind of got this grill area here and some kind of stripes like warning stripes and then some other parts there so essentially what you'd be doing is making a model let's say for example this was a corridor you'd uh, create some subdivisions on your model and then essentially what you'd be doing is projecting a plane and then putting say a, um, a segment of that uh, projection on onto here and uh, and then basically moving the things around and playing around with some of these uh, images to kind of cr basically create um, various textures. Let's go and have a look at some others. So we've got more of a kind of like fancy sort of stone scene here, but you can see there they're kind of divided between these bands. And this is where you'd kind of overlay your um, geometry. We've got a thing here, again, some nice kind of models. Now you can hand paint these. What you can also do, and this is what we will be exploring in uh, future videos, is looking at say creating something in um, in Maya and either sculpting into it say either in ZBrush or in Blender and then baking it in say something like um, uh, Substance Painter and then using that image to then overlay on you know an existing sort of a model. We've got some more here as well. So again, just thought I'd show you these just so you can kind of get an idea of like what what it tends to kind of look like it's horizontal lines it's it's kind of divided different types of brick texture or it could be panels anything really even things like wood so you've got this kind of wood texture you, you could uh, use for some environment something like that and then we've got you know some again these kind of like uh, tiles here and we've got wooden um, planks of course there's things like things like that and then uh, scroll down you've got bricks and uh, and it can also be broken up. So here, you've, we're sort of going in vertical lines now. And it's kind of using like even things like this. So this won't necessarily um, um, form a sort of, a, you know, a continuation, a mirror. But it, it can be used, part of this can be used uh, alongside all these other things to kind of create, I guess, kind of, uh, what well, you can see here is a kind of... Um, dwarven tavern so it would be elements within that kind of tavern that they could sort of use um, to um, sort of use on the models 
then uh, we even got books um, we've got this kind of ornate um, uh, texture here we've also got some tiles so really you know it's it's fairly limitless can be used for environments can be used for uh, for props too but um, just thought I'd show that to you before we get into the modeling I just wanted to explore some of the possibilities that you could potentially achieve by doing the tiling for the um, for the models that you're going to be creating now this is just an image that I brought off of the internet I've messed around with it a little bit uh, in Photoshop and um, but what I've done is I've used this thing called the offset tool which I'll demonstrate for you and essentially it makes the images uh, tileable so you can use that and, in, and indeed it translates to things like normals and ambient occlusion and things like that and essentially you can take this image which is built for the zero to one space and then effectively if I just go over to Maya now um, put it onto uh, your um, your model and um, it will essentially uh, map out onto that now you can see here in the uh, UV editor I've effectively used uh, 3D cut and sew. I've um, unwrapped it all, all the faces, put them all together, and essentially overlaid it onto the image. And uh, of course, I could still, I just did this kind of briefly, but you can sort of tweak around with it and, um, you know, even sort of, you know, s stitch it back together again. But effectively, this is kind of what you can create. Now, I haven't like applied any subdivision to this or anything like that, but it's just to kind of demonstrate what you're looking at if you want to kind of play around with the scale of this of course what you can do is if I just go to UV shell uh, you can sort of scale it up like so or scaling it down on the other side or scaling scale it down to kind of scale it up as it were if that makes sense so um, that's that in principle so I'm just going to do a little demonstration about how you achieve that so I gonna go back to uh, Photoshop now so the image that I used here, if I just go and go and grab it again. So if I go to file and to open and I'll go and find the image. I think there it is there. Cracked wall. I'm going to open that. So this is just like a photograph of a cracked wall. And effectively what I did was I... Um, copied it, put it onto this backdrop, scale it up. So I wanted a kind of more stylized uh, version of this. So if I just kind of zoom out a little bit, and what I'll do is I'll just kind of bring that up to say something like that. And again, you can sort of position this wherever you want. And I just did a few things. Um, I wanted it kind of to look a little bit more stylized. So I went through to the filter, artistic, and use cut out just to reduce the kind of noise on it and obviously this is a little bit too a little too little but you know maybe even something like that could even be something like that say and then you know just kind of play around that, that way you know and again I don't want it to be sort of too noisy. It could even be something like that. I'm going to click OK. Um, the next stage, though, is what we need to do is we need to make it sort of tileable. So I'm just going to quickly just crop this just so there's no other overhanging uh, image. And effectively, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attempt to create some um, links to help it to tile. And there's a function in filter now i do believe that uh, photoshop 2020 or 2020 is 2021 out i'm not entirely sure but 2020 it does have this function where you can actually tile um this doesn't I've, i'm still working from photoshop 2018 but effectively what you do is you go to filter other and then you go to offset and what it does here as you can see there it kind of creates like basically the four corners of, of the picture and if I just, um, it jumps around a little bit, but if I just try and get it, you can see there where it's kind of in the middle. I want to get it just roughly in the middle, say around about there. And then what you can do here is, and I'll just do a demonstration for you, you can start to kind of um, 
sort of map it together. So if I say go to like say something like the smudge tool and again you can use whatever brush you want. Okay, we'll sort of go with something like that. And once you're kind of happy with it, this is effectively what you're going to have kind of um, repeated over the over the model. So basically, you could take that and then save this out. So you could save as a JPEG, but uh, perhaps save it as a PNG or a Targa, perhaps. Uh, I'll just save it as a PNG for now. And I'll just call this... Um, cracks I'll put it on the desktop there and I'll go back to uh, uh, Maya and we'll just have a go at creating a uh, just a basic cube so if I just go and create a cube we'll apply our uh, image in a minute so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to use the uh, 3d cut and sew and perhaps just break this up so this is a very basic shape so not a lot of work and then once you've got those in place and again you can you can play around with these and you can kind of get them looking more even, but uh, I'm just going to just quickly zip through this just for the purposes of the video. And uh, what we'll do here is we'll go to material attributes and then we'll go and upload our texture. So I'm going to go to file. Let's go and find our cracks, which are there. Go to open. And you can see there now. It's wrapping around now you can sort of play around with some of these so for example if you wanted it you know if this is like a sort of some kind of prop where you put some subdivisions in it's like some kind of concrete prop you could do that if you wanted to you could take say you know take your time maybe and just um uh, stitch some of these together so you kind of got this kind of thing going on and then when it kind of when you bring it all together you know it kind of it's a bit more linear so you can actually see it kind of going around the edges you know so it's just it really depends on like level of detail what you're using if you're doing it as a kind of quick prop something in the background that's not really going to be scrutinized you might just kind of overlay them all if you want it to be a little bit more precise you can do that and of course you know, this isn't looking too great at the moment but you know what you can do is you can have some subdivisions sort of again i'm just going to do this quite quickly But other than that, that's pretty much it. So, um, you know, certainly um, have to play around with that. But hopefully that's explained the principles of, um, you know, how to kind of create this sort of tessellated image. Uh, you, again, you know, going back to like what we're doing in the video, you could create strips of these. So you could have it kind of going from end to end as opposed to all the way around. So if you've got maybe like a, a rock texture or some kind of pattern, obviously you'd have these things, you know, going... Um, You'd have them in, you know in strips you know whatever it is in various oops various widths going wherever it is you're gonna get get them to kind of go to so there could be something there something there something there and obviously you know what um what it did do is it did sort of repeat at the ends and um effectively you'd have a strip of whatever so hopefully that's explained things and uh let's crack on with the rest of the video so how I started this scene is I started thinking about this kind of tavern, tannery type of um, environment and started thinking about this wall and thinking, OK, I'm going to basically uh, create a wall, but sort of do it in a modular way. So 
if I just come over here, the idea was that uh, I'd essentially create from here, from a cube, create this kind of oblong shape. And with the oblong shape, start basically using the um, multi-cut tool to start sort of cutting into it. I had a vague idea. I thought we we're going to have like a, a sort of beam at the top. And uh, it's, I'm not entirely sure of um, what you call it, but basically a kind of paneling, wooden paneling kind of going around um, a sort of like waist height for the character. And then you'd have kind of like skirting boards. So that was the kind of first move. And then before I actually started modeling out from it, that's where I started um, working into the artwork. Now I'm just going to bring over my illustrations from Photoshop. So I'll just bring this over here. So it's very simple. Like I said before, I'm, you know, I wasn't really interested in creating normals for this. I wanted to kind of do it very much like a, kind of a flat style kind of drawn. And I thought, what can I cram into this? Now, I couldn't cram everything, so I've created a couple. So essentially at the top here, you've got like a rope um, illustration, which I've included in uh, for the rope. This was to form part of the floorboards here. And then we've got the... Um, sort of a plaster wall uh, sort of area here. And then we've got this paneling as well. And then for the skirting boards, I was just simply going to use one of the floorboards again for that. Um, I'm going to get into like uh, essentially modeling from this just as an example. And essentially once you've got that, it kind of follows with the rest of it as well. So you basically just repeat um, the steps uh, for whatever it is you're creating, whether it's, uh, you know, stuff for an environment or even indeed props. I'm just going to show you the other trim sheet that I created. So this was for uh, other elements within the environment. We've got these kind of lamps. They were kind of like oil burning lamp type things that uh, I did and essentially sort of created this general texture. Then a kind of side view. Um, I've used elements of these and then I did this kind of long kind of illustration just so I could wrap it around the actual model and uh, and then we've got these kind of various cloths and I just basically changed the color uh, of these now I'm going to get into a, a little bit of detail with how you can if we just go back to this now how you actually repeat these in Photoshop um, I'll cover that um, um, a little later but um, there is a method that you can use with the um, with filter where you can basically offset it and actually create it so it's tileable but we'll get more into that a little bit later so what we're going to do is i'm going to start by essentially creating another model and um, hopefully it won't take uh, too long to do you can see here we've got some other elements i'm not going to get into that necessarily we've got the rope uh, which i used um, uh, sort of created using um, uh, using the curve tool and using a NURB circle and projected out from that and then that's where you saw the um, the illustration that I created here if you just sort of scroll up so you can see that there that's what I used on there then we've got the um, this kind of um, lamp um, I guess you can call it for the um, uh, for the walls and for the flame i just kind of put this in there for the video it's essentially a plane i created like a, an alpha channel in photoshop uh, of a plane and um sorry of a flame for the plane and uh you know it's worked into it a little bit and then just um put that on top but just to kind of give an idea but again i left it very kind of loose with the painting as well just to kind of create that effect there and then for the cloth uh just uh, use the quad tool uh, draped it over so basically worked from the quad tool if i just come over here worked uh, from the quad tool on here and then applied an end cloth to basically make it kind of droop down and then from there just applied the um the texture so that was that and then i put a crate in there again very very simple so with this i essentially if i just bring that over here Sorry, wrong one. Um, it's essentially the same face over and over and over again, and I'm modeled into it. And that was that. So it's all fairly straightforward. 
gets a little bit fiddly when you're kind of overlaying the images, but, um, but we'll, we'll get into that more. So let's uh, start by, um, could even just take this cube and copy it, what I've got there. So I'm just going to create a wall for the tavern. Just by sort of scaling this and just going to move this along here. So this is essentially how I created it. Nothing too fancy. And we'll make this the approximate size of this wall. So just try and kind of get the the general height. Something like that. That'll do. And then from there, I'm going to uh, start creating some subdivisions. So uh, using the multicut tool, I'm going to essentially put, uh, say, drop one in there. So this is the main beam. Then we've got the main wall with the plaster, which is there. Then we've kind of got this beading here which then leads on to this paneling, and then we're going to leave a bit of space for the uh, for the skirting boards. So that's essentially uh, that. Now, I'm not going to model into this just yet because I want to start really cutting out and overlaying the images. So what we're going to do there is we're going to use the 3D cut and sew for that. Um, to basically yeah create those um, so we can overlay the images so if i just go on to uh, sort of create say something like pick a pick any kind of view of it just so we can get a good um, get a good view and then from there what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to uv i'm going to go um, say camera based and then from there i'm going to go to uv and uv editor i'm just going to move that out of the way I'm just going to bring along the UV editor. So I'm just going to bring that out. Let's just try that again, shall we? Camera based. There we go. And now we've got a view of the um, of the wall. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this in just into our view here, just so we can actually see it side by side. So as I'm manipulating this, you can also see what's going on on the other side. And then from there, I'm just going to go to UV and also 3D Cut and Sew Tool. Select that, and then I'm going to go right-click Component and Edge. And this is where we're going to start sort of chopping this up. So we'll start off by, we'll do the top. So I'm going to just go and double-click that to select the top. And we're going to do the middle part here for where the plus is going. Then we've got this bit of beading here. And then we've got the skirting boards there as well. We're going to need to make some splits. It's entirely up to you where you do this. I would suggest if it's going to be, if the environment's going to be this side, maybe make it at the back. And it's going to go and just double click down this edge. You can vary it up. You can chop it up if you like, but um, I'm just going to keep it simple. And then for the top here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go double click and have this unwrap. So imagine like a sort of cardboard box there like so okay i think that's all looking all right i might just kind of put some on the bottom edge as well so a bit like the top so i'm just going to bring that round to there and i think that's covered all the corners there we go so it should open just like cardboard there we go so next what i'm going to do is i'm going to go right click component and UV shell, hover over it, and then hit D. Now you'll see there, after doing that, even though I've not actually gone and unwrap this, unwrap the other sections, it's actually done it for me. So if I go and select that and hit W, you'll see there now, we can see our UV, all, all looking pretty good. I'm gonna go and hit this other one now. That's all looking good as well. You can sort of see the sides there. And we've got this middle section here. And let's just go and see what that looks like. Okay, that's not looking too hot. I might just kind of go back into the 3D cut and sew and just see. 
I can see there it's actually deselected itself for some reason. So I'm going to go right click, go into edge, and let's just put a cut in there. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why it's done that, but uh, let's just go and do that again. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click component shell and then hover over and then hit D and hopefully that's going to sort that out now. OK, that's looking a lot better. Right. All right. So we're, we're kind of getting into shape now. We've kind of got all of these kind of laid out and we can move them around, of course, you know, we're in whatever kind of, you know, direction. I think before we get the image on here, I think it'd be a good idea just to take this opportunity just to straighten these out. So we can literally, if I just move this, move, just create a little bit of space like so. And what I can do here is go into UV, highlight the entire thing, maybe just not that, and right click and straighten, straighten UVs. So basically everything's just looking a bit better. Let me just try and do that again. I think we had something funny happen there. Let's just try that again. I'm just going to rotate that. You can see there we've got a couple of rogue UVs. There we go. Awesome. All right, and then I'm just going to bring zoom out a little bit. And once I've done that, I'm just going to go and check this other end as well. That's OK. And then from there, what we can do is um, we can highlight the entire thing. Right click straighten and then straighten UVs. And then we can do the same with uh, the rest of them. So maybe even just, you know, flip between like shell and going to UV, highlight them, shift, right click, straighten, straighten UVs, and let's do the same with uh, with all the rest of them.
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to now just join up uh, some of these edges just so I know what strip is what. So you can see here it's kind of separated the faces. So all I'm going to do is you can see where I've highlighted it. I'm just going to go shift, right click, and then move and sew edges like so. And then basically just do the same with the others. Okay, so we've got most of it laid out now. You can see there we've got, uh, I'm just going to move this section up uh, to just below the other one. Move this one down. And that one down as well. And all I'm doing here is just sort of arranging them just so I can sort of see them. Yeah, there we go. That's all working all right. Then we've got the middle part, and then there's that there. Okay. So once we've kind of got that sorted, um, we're really ready to bring in the image. So I'm going to just move these to one side. And what I'm going to do here is, in the actual uh, the uh, 3D view, is just go back into um, object mode. And I'm going to... Um, it's already got a material assigned to it, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the image. So go to material attributes and from there where it says color, I'm going to click on the uh, little checker, go to file. And then when it creates a little folder, I'm going to go and find the image. Now, if memory serves me correctly, I think it was. There we go. So this is one here. And I'm going to go and open it and I think it's going to dropped it in, I think. There we go. All right. So you can see there is kind of it's it's already put in an image in there, even though we don't have the UVs in the zero to one space. Now, the cool thing is um, it's a sort of common misconception that if there's if there's um, any geometry outside of the zero to one space, um, it's um, it's not going to be seen. That's not true. This just simply just repeats and repeats and repeats. So it doesn't really matter if you have um, your geometry or your um, uh, your UV islands outside of it. It's still going to pick it up. So this will allow us to really expand upon and build upon, you know. Um, um, whether it's the wall or whether it's the floor and things like that. So it's very, very useful. Uh, so let's start from the top, shall we? So uh, looking here, I'm going to have a look at uh, taking this back into UV shell. So there. So this is the first piece. And we should be able to sort of see it in real time there. If I now go, I'm just going to go and shift these other ones out of the way just for the time being. Let's just move them to the top, say, something like that. And let's just deal with the first one first. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to overlay this. Now I'm going to choose one of these for the beam and it's going to also wrap around. So I'm going to 
shrink this down and just scale that down a little bit more say something like that and you can see already if I just go and click off you can see already it's dropped it in let's just move this over a little bit and we've got some really interesting texture there and now if you wanted to if I just bring this over a, a sec now I mentioned before about you can expand on it you can do exactly that if you wanted to you could basically just increase the detail so you can see as I'm expanding it out it's putting more detail in there now it's starting to look a little bit weird because it is essentially we, we all get a little bit of repetition going on there and it's 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 a little bit unnecessary as well we're getting enough information in there already but we can go outside the bounds a little bit say something like that if we wanted to maybe move it over so it's a little bit more central and I think we've pretty much got it covered there I think that's kind of looking okay that's what you know essentially want to be aiming for and then we're ready to move on to the next section which is the uh, the plaster section so let's go and find our plaster area which is if I just go into um, UV shell it's this one here there we go so I'm just going to bring that down you can see there how it's kind of playing out on the uh, actual model and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring this uh, into the space say something like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the scale tool just to expand so I'll make sure I can kind of get the entire thing like that maybe just shrink that down a wee bit say something like that now it's looking okay it's looking a little bit stretched if you compare it to the other one uh, it's looking a little bit stretched so what we need to do is we need to expand this again so I'm just going to use the scale tool and just expand this out and you can see there now it's actually looking a lot better in terms of you know the the detail but also it's not looking so stretched and you've got the same on the other side as well pretty cool all right and again you can sort of tweak these things if you wanted to kind of like you know move it up a little bit and get a little bit more of that showing as well so it's not such a clean edge you could do that if i just go right click and um, uh, go into object mode and just click off you get in a nice kind of although we're getting a little bit of a um, it's a little bit out of sync there so it can maybe do a bit of tweak we can do a bit of tweaking with that so for example we could if we wanted to um if i perhaps even go let's have a look if i were to go to say even could try uv let's have a look at that so is that there we go so we've got that area there you know we could just sort of tweak it around like that and even at the ends ends as well if you come and have a look at the the end point there uh, maybe in both these points and again we can kind of tweak around like that you can see if I just zoom in a little bit you know you can sort of tweak it whatever so lots of things you can do just to kind of get things to be fairly exact other other sides kind of looking okay all right so we've got that there and we're ready to go into the next section which is this kind of paneling so i'm going to go into um uh, uv and uv uh, shell again so that's the well actually it's the top one first isn't it so i'm going to go and click on that just to identify it go on here just uh, zoom out a little bit i'm going to bring this down now into the fray and move this in and I'm going to zoom in and for this I'm going to basically stretch it over that um, little bit of beading a little bit of paneling there so again use the scale tool 
I'm just going to expand that out a little bit. Like so. To say something like that. And I think that's kind of looking okay. And again, you know, like these areas, like before, you can kind of tweak these. But um, I'm just going to, I'm not sure if that's entirely, that might be, might need a little bit of straightening. So I might just zoom out a little bit, right click, UVs, and just go shift, right click, and straighten, straighten UVs. There we go, that's better. And then just go into UV shell. And then just bring that up again like so and just bring it across so just looking at this um another thing that you do get when you do stuff like this is you can get some stretching that does happen um again we can remedy that to short well after we kind of get get everything in so let's just click off that a second let's just go and have a look and see what it looks like without anything on it so that's yeah looking a little bit stretched now i'm not sure about this here i think that's kind of looking okay um, I might be inclined just to expand this out a little bit again. So we go into the shell, and then I'll use the scale tool, and just yeah, that's that's looking better. Just need to kind of scale it out. You can actually do it to the pretty much a similar size. If I now go into object mode and just click off that and just zoom in, that's looking a lot more like. So you can see there the bits of the green and stuff like that in there. It's not looking so stretched. Let's go and have a look at the uh, this middle section. So again, I'll probably go to a UV shell. Click on that. So that's that part there. I'll just see if I can uh, move these around a little bit, just so I can create a little bit more space. There we go. And with that, I'm just going to go and bring this down to say there, and move it across like so. And then let's just go and zoom in. And just like before, I'm going to use the scale tool and then just really expand on that. Again, I can just see this is a little bit off, so I just might just need to um, just go into UV, highlight all of it, shift, right click, straighten, straighten UVs. And then I can bring it back into view like so. Say something like that. Um, in fact, let's go into um, Shell and let's have a look and see what we get. Okay, so that's looking all right so far. Now let's just go and have a look and see in terms of scale. So that's probably a little bit too thick for my li liking. I wanted the kind of um, this paneling to be a little bit uh, narrower. So I'll click on it again and uh, go into UV, UV shell. And then just like before, I'm going to bring this out. So I'm going to go expand this out. And again, you be the judge. I'm thinking probably something maybe like that. Let's go into object mode. Yeah. That's kind of looking a bit more like what I was uh, what I was after, and I'm just going around the side, around the back. Yeah, that's all looking all right. Excellent. And then just on to the last part now. So it's going to go to the UV UV shell. Click on that. So that's the last part there. Bring that down. So what I'm going to do here is probably going to use like the, one of the beams again to um, just like the wooden beam. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to overlay it now. Now, it may look counterintuitive to do this. It's like, hold on a minute, what, you're laying a, the, the island over the island? Isn't that going to cause any kind of problems? It isn't. It doesn't really matter. The only problem it would cause is if you're wanting to, say, paint over the top of this. Um, so, for example, if you're putting this into a game engine, probably the best thing to do is like, um, you know, uh, create, um, um, you know, a decal 
to kind of um, overlay if you want to kind of put things like grime in there and things like that. But obviously, it's sharing the same kind of coordinates. So, but apart from that, it's all it's all good. I mean, another thing you could do as well is, I guess, technically, you could put like a plane over it, and then go over that with something else. Um, that's entirely possible as well. Um, but yeah. So we've got that kind of uh, overlaying there. And then all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to expand this out a little bit. Like so. Something like that. I'm going to go object mode. Let's just go and have a look at that. So that's looking pretty cool. I could kind of continue with that and, uh, you know, continue tweaking it. I could see a little bit of repetition going on there. So I might like want to perhaps just perhaps not be so aggressive with the expansion. Maybe have a look at, you know, scaling this back a little bit just so it's. Or maybe even, yeah, scaling it back a little bit just so it's not looking so repetitive. Uh, but again, you can sort of tweak with these things. As you so wish. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, even something like that. Scale wise, it's not looking really particularly pixelated. So that's that stage. In the next stage, what we're going to be looking at is uh, putting some subdivisions in there and extruding um, parts of the wall. Now, before we start creating uh, any sort of deformations, I would um, strongly advise that you make a copy. So I'm just going to make a copy of this Shift D. Uh, this is just basically so you've got to back up and in case anything kind of goes awry, then at least you've got something to kind of fall back on. Um, so moving back to our piece here. So what I'm going to start doing is really um, start thinking about um, if you go and look at this as a reference, what we can kind of do in terms of or perhaps more specifically, maybe even one of these at the back. So this is kind of like the second stage. This is the stage we're at at the moment. This is the next stage. So if I go to, let's just hit F and go to this right now. It's essentially creating these kind of um, extrusions just to kind of give it a bit more of a kind of, you know, three dimensional quality, make it look a bit more blocky. So what we're looking to do really is um, click on it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to select probably use something like uh, maybe faces or even um if i just click on that there even the um uv um shell and do it that way okay so once you kind of got that selected what you do is control and e you can actually do it here as well and then you can either kind of go with uh, local translate or you can just go with thickness. So thickness, you'll kind of get this kind of thing going on. Which is looking good. That's one way. And the other way is you can kind of go with like local translate. It pretty much kind of does a, a similar thing. Um, might even go with. With something like that, so it's kind of. Yeah, either or will work, but I would say something like perhaps that can go for something a little bit bigger, but I would say something like that. And then it brings us on to the second part. So what I'm going to do here is again, either with the UV shell or you can just select faces. That's another one. So if you go to face, click on there and then uh, double click to get the entire thing. So that's shift, sorry, and double click. Let's do that again. So that's click. Shift, double click to select it all. Control and E. And then again, local translate. And I'll just bring this out a wee bit like so. And make sure also that you just check to see nothing else is selected because that can happen as well. And we don't want that to kind of happen. So yeah, it's all looking all right. And then the next part is just the skirting. So again, uh, with faces selected, select, shift, double click, 
and it should by right select all of that that's all looking good and then control and E local translate and then we can just bring this out like so and that's all looking tickety-boo right okay so that's that stage done now that then moves us on to the next stage which is um, trying to give it a bit of character so we've kind of we've used the extrude tool but you can see here with the with these ones um, we've got um, yeah, um, so if we go to here sorry we've got a bit of kind of irregularity like it's all kind of a little bit bent it just gives it a bit more character so you know we're trying to sort of avoid straight lines and things like that so the more kind of quirky um, the better so again you could maybe take a copy of this it won't hurt to do that in case you know something kind of goes awry so you could even just go uh, select that shift and D and then just move that to one side it's entirely up to you but I think it's always good to have like a bit of a backup now let's go back to our piece here and then from here what we can do is we can use the um, multi-cut tool and if you hold down control you'll see there we can actually it'll drop an edge loop in either way uh, wherever you want it so I would say it'd be good to sort of maybe start off in the middle and then like half that half that like so and maybe half again De again just depends on the level of detail but I would say something like that's probably about right and then same thing uh, going horizontally so we'll say we'll drop one in the middle say around about there and then we'll drop one say there and maybe even one around about there so we've got our kind of subdivisions there just make sure that it's all kind of covered sometimes um, it may not connect up you might find that so you might just want to revisit the steps um, you know sometimes it might not connect up at the back it could be to do with something's overlapping something's getting in the way but that's all looking kind of all right as far as I can see and then from there essentially go into like vertex now you could do this a number of ways you can now just select vertexes and move them in I found um, using the soft selection so that's B you see that it's kind of changed color if I hold down B and uh, left button mouse yeah, and move it just from side to side. You can actually change the level of influence on the rest of the other vertexes. So if I like would say select one vertex like that and hit W, it's not just going to affect this this one here. It's going to affect the others. And I can see it snapping back. I think one of the reasons for that is, and it's something that I didn't mention um, before. If I double click on this, you'll see there I've got preserve UVs. So that's good for when you kind of like uh, manipulating. So I'll, I'll probably like show you as, as an example. If I were to, let's see if this works. It's going to say edge mode and then double click. Let's take it off soft selection. You can see there it's kind of flipping back and forth. It's basically just so it kind of preserves everything. If I take it off there now, you can actually move it, but it will distort it. which we don't want but for the purposes of like manipulating it we're not going to be making like a, a, a large amount of changes so I think it's okay to sort of uncheck that and just click off that and now if we just go and go to vertex and start manipulating it again turn on soft selection and then say take um, let's take like say one vertex and move it We'll be able to kind of get it to kind of stay there it's not going to deform it too much uh, in the scheme of things so uh, and then you could just basically have a bit of fun I'd say just don't go too wild with it what we what we're aiming to do is just create like this kind of worn you know like it's kind of got character right so just perhaps don't be um, too kind of um, yeah too um, aggressive with it and just choose parts of it move it back and forth just so it's got a bit of a wiggle and it just gives it a kind of uh, a, a bit of character yeah something like that if you want to kind of turn it up at the ends you could do so you could maybe 
take part of that, maybe bring it up a little bit, or even, if I just go back a second, I could even maybe just take these end part, end, um, end points here and just raise those up a little bit, perhaps maybe take the top here, maybe bring that down a little bit, you know, just so you kind of got this kind of crooked kind of um, looking thing. If you wanted to you could kind of bring it at the sides i'd say probably leave the sides because if you remember we're kind of going for like a more of a modular feel about this so let's say we were going to end it there um we could then effectively take something like this go back into object mode and hit shift and um d and let's say let's say we rotate it so let's just take over to the channel box there so take it to say uh, minus 90 minus 90 degrees and then sort of move it if we want to kind of make a, a room say for example let's say you know we've modeled this and then we've got it into say unreal engine you know we don't want it to be too off we do want it to kind of match so for example here you know it's got to kind of look out for things like stuff like this so you know it's good to kind of check it now rather than later and like get it into unreal engine just making sure i mean also this is um wood and it's supposed to be old so there will be some irregularities it's not meant to be perfect but you know you want to be able to come kind of at least have some semblance of this kind of going together so you don't want to make it too irregular at the ends but that seems to be working uh, uh quite well uh we've got some nice kind of textures going on there uh, with all these um divisions and also you know we've got uh, the bits at the end as well with the kind of paneling and we've got the skirting board one of the things we've not looked at is the uh, well a couple of things one is making smaller versions of this so you can see there i've got some ones that uh, i prepared earlier where it's basically this but it's kind of um it's kind of squeezed down now you could um uh, maybe even before you get to this stage maybe in the previous stage before you actually start adding in subdivisions uh, squeeze this down we could have a look and see if we can do it with this uh, let's just move this to one side so basically what that would involve is using the uh, the scale tool and just sort of squeezing it down like this now as you can see we've got um, a bit of an issue going on with um, the scaling of the images so we probably need to say um, after we've kind of like played around with the scale of it so this could be like a, a small wall section for like a doorway, that kind of thing. Um, and I think you'll see over here as well in the other um, examples, we've got, uh, perhaps I'll have a look at it over here. Uh, we've got these like pillars almost. Uh, let me just go and select one and hit F. There we go. Um, you know, with these kind of pillars. So that was all done really by just scaling this back. So I kind of took like one of these, say so took that, let's say I copy this again shift D and then just move this along and essentially squeezed it together could even be something like it's probably best it's probably not going to work like that so I think what I'd be inclined to do instead of like using that zero saying about it's, it's kind of okay for this version I think when you get around to a pillar it's probably not going to work that's probably where you'd, you'd more than likely use something like this where before i've actually played around with it and manipulated it i could go shift d so let's just go and bring this into view and let's just go and scale this down now so with this it should be a bit easier so now i'm not really having to kind of play around with um you know all the subdivisions i can basically stick with almost with that and then perhaps just add some uh, subdivision there but you can see there it's made this kind of look quite ugly so again like before what we could do is uh, if i say go on face and let me just go and hit f just so i can get a bit more central so with something like that i could sort of select those faces like so and what we can do here is oh sorry i've still got soft selection turned on let's turn that off there we go and what we can do is in order to kind of like get rid of that squishy um effect i can take this and 
bring it in. So obviously it's kind of a contradiction. As I bring it in, it actually brings it out. But you can see there, it's a lot more in line with the plaster on there. And then from there, you know, can work on all the, all the, um, the various other parts. But I think that's kind of looking, it's kind of looking okay, really. So look something like that. Oh, sorry, I'm moving the wrong one. Let's try that again. I think that's looking okay. Um, same thing with the with the top as well. So you could take that. Let's go shift and select all of these. So I'd say get these sorted first. And then once you've done that, you can... Um, I think I was just going to select this top one as well. Uh, you can then play around with making this scale a bit, you know, a bit better, just so it's more in line. And again, if you want to kind of do the individual faces, you can kind of play around with those as well to get the sort of desired effect. I'll just zoom in a little bit there and just see what's going on. Yeah, again, you can kind of have a play. Um, but yeah, definitely kind of get these parts. I would suggest get these parts sorted before you actually start distorting it. So I'll say something like that. And uh, using the scale tool again for that. And Now, if you find that it's like it's moving parts of it that you don't want it to move, because it's kind of still connected, so say for example like something like this you can see there if i just zoom in a little bit um it's still kind of connected to the other model so that that is um that is something you can sort of take care of by, by perhaps uh, just as an example oops just as an example you could separate this if you wanted to and just overlay it so you could take that say that face go uv and say maybe go even something like camera based and it and then go to say uv and uv shell you can see there it's kind of i think it's made the whole thing quite massive there we go um let's try that again and then what you could do is you could shift this move this to where you need it to be and then you've basically just got you've got a bit more kind of control over what uh, what uh, what you're doing there you know, so you're not having to kind of rely on it being sort of connected. And you can do the same thing with the with the rest of them as well, just so they kind of line up. And then once you've kind of done that, obviously, a couple of things that you might want to do as well. Uh, just looking at this, you can see there I've kind of seemed to have lost um, the sort of shaping on the sides there. If I go into, say, face, uh, you might want to just bring some of these out a little bit. You can see there where I've squeezed it. It's kind of squeezed the sides down as well. So you can sort of do something like that. You could even just do them both at the same time. So let's say I've got that there if you want it a bit more even. Uh, got that face selected there. Shift and select that face. Then go to the scale tool. And then you can actually bring the both of them out like that. So you could be a bit more precise that way. And then basically the same thing as well for the sides here. And then once you've kind of... Once you've kind of done these, you're ready to um, start having to play with making some distortions. Like before, using the uh, multi-cut tool, you can just say maybe, it doesn't have to be too much, just something like that. And again, you know, need to make some changes on the side there, but you, you know, you know generally what to do. And then from there, you can just go to right click vertex. And then again, just start, you know, having a sort of play around, either using soft selection like that and just kind of distorting it like so if you want to perhaps not too much that's probably a little bit extreme um maybe even take that influence down a little bit hit b and just bring that down a little bit just so it's not changing the entire thing you know so it could be something like that even and obviously you know you'd do all the changes um and basically you do the same thing with the with the middle one as well. So that's that's effectively it. I mean, if you've um, um, stuck it out through this video, you basically you've 
essentially got the basics of doing uh, trim sheets. Um, there's additional stuff that I'll put in here. This is just for, you know, uh, really just for show and just kind of creating a scene. So, for example, I created these um, boxes. If I go and select those now, you'll see there what I've done. Essentially uh, separated all the faces, laid them all down, and then used the uh, multi-cut tool just really just to cut this up a little bit, extrude the faces, pull some of them out, and um, stuff like that. And made, and this is essentially, these two are the same. Uh, we've got the end cloth stuff. It's not really vital for this tutorial, but again, it's just a bit of dressing. And then the rope, you'll see there, if I go and select that, that's something from the previous trim sheet where I just basically cut this up. Um, I think I did like one half, then they did the other half, and then essentially um, just overlay them, overlay them, overlay them, and then stretch them out, and then essentially you've got this kind of rope effect. If you want it to kind of look smooth, by the way, so you can see here, there's kind of like, particularly on the rope, uh, it's got like a sort of, uh, it's smoothed out um, here. If you don't kind of smooth it out, it may, may look a little bit more jagged, but you do that essentially by, um, it's... Um, uh, shift and right click and then you can go soften and then uh, soften edge soften harden edges when you've got a combination of soft and hard edges and it'll basically calculate it for you or you've got hardened edge as well so yeah so you can go soften edge it's already softened anyway but um, that's that but other than that that's it and then you know there's these lamps and stuff but that again that's just in there for effect um, if anyone wants to sort of see a video of how I sort of you know create um, you know um, images with transparencies you know i'm happy to do that but other than that that is it folks so hopefully you found this video useful it's given you an insight into trim sheets and hopefully demystified some of those elements of course it's quite a big topic and uh, i'm going to be doing a few videos just exploring it and perhaps going into more of the modeling side of things and uh, creating more details but um, hopefully this has got it off to a, a really good start with our understanding and uh, look forward to seeing what you produce in the future. Okay, thanks for watching folks. Bye for now.